Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome to the official start of This Week in Powerlifting. This Week in Powerlifting is very excited to bring you guys educational and entertaining content, including current news, technique reviews, informational topics, and lifter highlights. So with that being said, let's get right into the news then. So this past week, a EPF bench only powerlifting meet was held this week, and the uh, the video shown are world records that have been set at this powerlifting meet, and there has been controversy surrounding these bench presses and these world records due to them all having very small range, limited range of motion due to their high arch. Now these lifts have been pretty unpopular with the IPF Instagram page following, as shown by the comments here, 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 and here, and there's many other examples of those types of comments. Um, but my favorite comment happens to be this one. This comment is just hilarious to me because the commenter is just implying that we can press some sort of delete button and everyone forgets how to set up. Everyone's mobility just completely vanishes and no one can arch and we have to flat back forever going forward. And I will say it was incredibly difficult to find a picture of someone actually performing the barbell bench press flat back. This is why I had to find this picture of this animated dude benching because I literally could not find anyone on Google Images that had a flat back while benching. And if you have any sort of upper back or glute size on you, then you're going to have an arch while benching. It's going to be impossible to avoid it unless you like fold in on yourself while benching, which you shouldn't do. Because, um, you know, if you want to bench effectively, efficiently, and, uh, you know, keep your shoulders safe, you know, be in this for a long time and sustainably bench press, then you're going to want to arch. And the reason why this is starting to become a really hot topic within the powerlifting community right now, especially among coaches and uh, uh, high level lifters, is because the IPF is even going so far as to propose rule changes to limit arching and to increase range of motion requirements. The IPF president himself, Gaston, is even suggesting that lifters should have to uh, perform bench press in a flat back, which we already outlined is you know not possible for these you know lifters who have very hypertrophied glutes and upper backs and want to perform the bench press in an effective, efficient way. But, you know, maybe if Gaston redacts these statements, I will actually follow him back, but that is a big maybe. Now, like I mentioned, this has been a hot topic among coaches and high-level lifters, and uh, the majority definitely thinks that we should keep arching and that arch, you know, we shouldn't just perform the bench flat back like a sane person would think. But, um, you know, there are those that do want at least some sort of change. And um, personally, I don't mind but uh, if there were to be a change, my opinion would reflect those shown in the uh, video that Candido and Sean Noriega did, uh, where I believe they wanted, uh, if there were to be a change, it would be uh, on grip width um, based on weight class, I believe, because at the high end level, weight classes become height classes and height is correlated with wingspan. And if you had some sort of, you know, corresponding uh, you know, grip width to weight class, then you would see greater ranges of motion and more legitimate looking bench presses throughout, you know, competition. Now that wraps up the news for the week. Uh, now I want to move into the informational topic of the week, which will be going over utilizations of the high bar squat in powerlifting programming. The high bar squat can find its place in many powerlifting programs and can serve many different purposes. The first of those purposes of which I'll cover is to expose an athlete to a squattier squat pattern. Primarily, uh, powerlifters compete with the low bar squat, and if someone leans more towards the hingy side of the low bar squat where they're really bent over, um, what you'll see is after a prolonged period of time or if just low barring too often, you'll see that that hinge become a little exaggerated where they are too folded over to a point where it's disadvantageous for them. So exposing them to a high bar squat, which is a squattier squat pattern and uh, building strength through that um, movement will allow them to feel more confident being squattier in their low bar squat. And you will see technique improvements just happen naturally as you continue to build your high bar squat. 
The next two uh, purposes kind of go together. If you're finding that the low bar squat is beating up too much in order for deadlift to perform well, then perhaps put a high bar on a secondary or tertiary day where a low bar squat might be fatiguing your deadlift, a high bar squat might not generate significant enough fatigue for that deadlift day to be fatigued and then you can then perform better than you have prior. Next, whether it's fatigue or injury risk, if you cannot meet the required amount of volume you need to progress with uh, having your days being both low bar, then perhaps put uh, one of those days as a high bar day so that you can then meet your required amount of volume without either fatiguing yourself to the point where you can't perform well or you know putting yourself at risk of injury due to your body being unable to handle low bar the same way that you can high bar, then you can meet your volume requirements and progress the way you deserve. Lastly, um, high bar squat can also be used as a desensitization tool, right? If you're squatting three times a week, low bar, and you're seeing really good progress, but uh, you want to sustain that progress, then you can make one of those days high bar uh, as a desensitization you know, factor so that when you return back to three times a week low bar, the, the stimulus will be as effective as it was the first time around. This can also be done with two times a week squat. It doesn't have to just be three times a week squat. But that wraps up the, uh, the primary purposes that I program high bar for my lifters. All right, now that you know uh, how to program high bar in your powerlifting programs, Let's move on to our technique critiques for the week. All right, so first I'm gonna go over my friend Carlos Mata's uh, deadlift. Uh, he, I think this is 694 pounds, so a pretty impressive deadlift, honestly. But uh, here we'll get into my critique now. So there are two things going wrong with uh, Carlos's pull here. So the first thing is that he is biasing a whole lot of uh, rounding, you know, a whole lot of flexion, and his hips are really high. However, these are two things that just go hand in hand, so it's really just one problem. If So because he is so rounded over, when he wedges in, his hips are gonna be high, and he's kind of be do, gonna be doing like a wide stance, stiff leg deadlift, as you can see, and then he kind of gets in this positioning, and then lockout is really hard, and he kind of locks out like this. Um, whereas if what, what he needs to actually do in order to have the most efficient pull possible, right, is as he is wedging his entire body, towards the bar, he needs to actually start extending. Um, he needs to bias more extension than he is in currently. And so basically, you can just cue this by, a good cue for this, specifically when it's um, upper, you know, like the, the thor thoracic spine, and not your like lumbar that's uh, flexing, even though it's, you know, his lumbar is in flexion, it's mostly from the thoracic. A good cue for this is to just pull your chest through your arms and what you'll see is that you know you'll you'll uh, get into a more neutral position, but my hips are going to start lower as a result. You know they're not going to he's not going to be like this and up here. He's going to be down here where he can actually utilize his legs and then just pop straight up. And his pull, if he does that, is going to look very efficient. Next, we have Matthew Schombrad taking 505 pounds for a few reps, I believe, if that is a squat bar. So watch a few reps here, and then we will get into my critique around now. Now, Matt Schombrad, uh, a good friend of mine from Illinois State, he has the opposite issue that Carlos had. Kind of, it's different lifts, but um, Matt is biasing a little too much extension while he's squatting. Um, and which is probably why his depth isn't great, to be honest. Um, why he kind of probably just feels like he's trying, he's going as low as he can, but he probably just doesn't feel like he can go any lower here because he's extended. And um, when you're in extended position, your femurs won't, are inter uh, you'll limit the amount of internal rotation that you'll be able to hit, reach, and you need to have access to that internal rotation in your femur in order to actually get down to depth. <laughs> My quad just cramped there, I don't know why. Um, but in order to fix this, right, he can't just bias, you know, he can't just, uh, you know, flatten out, right? He can't just go into neutrality because what's gonna happen is with his close, narrow stance, he's just gonna have to bend over so much to the point that it's gonna become uncomfortable. So in order to free open more space, he probably just needs to assume a, you know, moderately wider stance and then he would be able to assume a natural, a neutral, you know, spine 
more neutral position, access greater depth, and have a more upright squat you know, while, while he's at it. So uh, this would uh, benefit him a lot. Um, I would, you know, if you have any sort of issues with wider squats in, in terms of your hips or anything like that, uh, then maybe, you know, uh, use some graded exposure where you slightly widen, you know, every session or so. Now, lastly, on this week in powerlifting, we are going to feature five lifters at the end of each video. Now, these lifters are special because they're lifters who are talented, lifters who have potential, lifters who are show impressive lifts but don't have the social media following or exposure uh, to back it up. And I really, uh, you know, one of the great things about being in powerlifting is, you know, being a part of the community. So helping these lifters become a part of the community uh, would be a great thing to provide them. Um, really just getting them known to everyone who is going to be watching these videos. So uh, we are going to start that now. To start things off, we have a bench set from Chase Ishmael, a 19-year-old 100kg lifter, coached by Trey Ricard. I believe they are from uh, Carolina. Uh, the Carolina is not sure which one, but uh, definitely definitely looks like his bench press would be good for the uh, new IPF proposed rules. So you know, it might be a good idea to lift there. But uh, this is a pretty strong set and that impressed me. So definitely is showing to have potential. Next, we have a 375 pound double from Leanne Lay, a 44 kilogram junior. Um, she attempted this for a triple, but unfortunately loses grip on this third rip. Although if you've ever used the Cerco barbell, which is the one being used here, you would know that it is really hard. To, there is, there's basically just no knurling. It's really hard to hold onto it. So maybe she has more here. Next, we have a pretty massive 540 pound deadlift from Erho Love. I'm sorry if I mispronounced her name, but this is the heaviest deadlift done by a female in Britain. And pretty surprisingly, she's only been powerlifting for like a year. So there's definitely more to come from her. Next, we have a meet recap for Justin Osano. Uh, he totaled 742 and a half kilograms at 75 kilogram body weight. Uh, he squatted 595 pounds, benched 402 pounds here, and the final clip will show him benching or deadlifting 639 pounds. Um, this 742 and a half kilogram total ties Eric Lapointe's total where he won USAPL Open Nationals. So he will certainly be a contender for that throne next year. Lastly, uh, we have a recap for our lifter. I see lots of potential in Devin Mervau. Uh, he did his first meet and totaled 1,700 pounds, uh, 1,703. And I believe he's also 18 years old, might be 19. I'm not 100% sure, but he is, competes in the 198 pound weight class. Um, he is a lifter I've watched for years. We follow each other for years um, and I've seen him uh, just do astounding things. Uh, but it wasn't until now where he finally did his first meet where he squatted 644, uh, benched 407, and finished it off with a 650-pound deadlift right here. So that's it for this week in powerlifting. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, before you go, though, I have something very important to say. So please stick to the end of this video. Uh, so uh, if you enjoyed watching this, make sure to please let me know. And so you let me know, you know, in, in the comment section, let me know on Instagram, DM me. Um, let me know through your support, between liking, subscribing, and sharing. Sharing is a huge one. Please do share this around. Um, this will let me know that this is worth doing, continuing. So if you really want to see that, that uh, this continue and see more things like this, then, uh, you know, uh, you guys are gonna have to kind of prove to me that this is something that uh, you really like, um, you know, this is a passion project of mine. I'm busy between, uh, school and coaching, but I'm willing to do this because, you know, I'm obviously very passionate about the sport and this is something I really enjoyed making as well. Um, and I want to make it better. And if you guys do show support, then I'm going to continue to put more and more effort into it because as I see it is worth it. And, it, um, I really want to, this to uh, grow. I really want to see this grow and become something uh, in powerlifting, in the powerlifting community. Um, and I want this to uh, serve powerlifting well. I want this to be something that will, uh, you know, be a uh, opportunity for powerlifting to grow. 
I feel like this type of content is something that powerlifting is really missing and really needs as well. Um, we have really long form content, uh, you know, between podcasts and informational videos that are hour, you know, hour two hours long that talk about one topic, and then we have really really short videos between TikToks, Reels, Instagram posts, you know, going over one topic or you know highlighting one lifter, and it's just you know it's a minute to two minutes long or just, you know, just uh, anything like that. But we don't have anything like this, which encompasses everything as a whole, touches on everything for a little bit and gives value to, you know, everyone. And I really do think, and I will try to make this something that anyone in powerlifting can enjoy and take value from. But with that being said, that's it for this week in powerlifting. See you guys next week.